The carnitine shuttle is step number two in our process of oxidizing fats for energy. So the first step was activating those fatty acids. Second step is transporting them into the mitochondrial matrix. And the third step will be beta oxidation. So as we can recall, fatty acid oxidation occurs in the mitochondrial matrix. But remember that the mitochondria has two membranes. It has an outer membrane and it has an inner membrane. So fatty acids that are shorter in length, they can cross both of these membranes and reach that matrix of the mitochondria. But when the fatty acids are too long, they cannot cross the inner membrane. They are not permeable to the inner membrane, so they're going to utilize a special transport system, this being the carnitine shuttle system. A general rule of thumb to remember is that if your fatty acid has less than 12 carbons, it will be able to pass through the inner membrane without the help of this carnitine system. But if your fatty acid has more than 14 carbons, it will need this carnitine system. So if you have more than 14 carbons, you're going to have to utilize the carnitine shuttle. So taking a look at the carnitine pathway, we have to understand that carnitine is actually a structure and the structure is depicted right over here. Now, what happens is that after we have activated our fatty acid, remember that initially our fatty acid it's not going to have this coenzyme group. It's going to have an oxygen. So it looked like this. And what we did was we added in our coenzyme A group. As a result, we have activated our fatty acid. Now, this R group over here, remember, it just represents an arbitrary number of carbons that we could have. This fatty acid could have 12 carbons, 13 carbons, 14 carbons, however many. But since we are using the carnitine shuttle, you have to remember that we must have more than 14 carbons. So this structure represents our activated fatty acid, where we have attached the coenzyme A group to the fatty acid. And now we will refer to it as an acyl-CoA. So we refer to it as an acyl-CoA. Now what happens is that our acyl-CoA, which is essentially our fatty acid, it is going to lose that coenzyme A group and it's going to form a bond with carnitine. Now carnitine forms that bond and then we get this structure of acyl carnitine. Now why do we do that? Because carnitine is going to facilitate the transport of our fatty acid into our matrix. Now this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme and this is this enzyme is actually found on the outer membrane of the mitochondria and it's called carnitine acyltransferase 1. So it does this reaction of attaching carnitine to our acyl-CoA and as a result this acyl-carnitine can be transported through that second membrane through a special transporter that we call carnitine acyl carnitine translocase. Now, this name will make a lot of sense once we're done talking about this mechanism. But we have this translocase, and we can see that our fatty acid has now reached the inner matrix of the mitochondria. And now we have to remove that carnitine because we want to reattach that coenzyme A group so we can. Uh, oxidize our fatty acid for energy through beta oxidation. So what we do is we remove the carnitine and we reattach the coenzyme group and we end up with our acyl-CoA once again. Now this step is catalyzed by an enzyme as well that is found on the inner membrane and it's called carnitine acyl transferase 2 and this enzyme as a result will give us our product of acyl-CoA. Now, what happens to the carnitine that was just split off acyl carnitine? Well, this carnitine is actually going to go back through the transporter, back out here to the cytosol, and it's going to undergo that same reaction again and bring another fatty acid into our matrix. That is why this 
protein transporter is a translocase and it's a carnitine acyl carnitine translocase because it can move both carnitine when it is done being used it can bring it back out and it also brings in acyl carnitine from the cytosol so this is essentially the carnitine shuttle pathway it's a mechanism for when you have more than 14 carbons in your fatty acid and you need to bring it inside the mitochondrial matrix for beta oxidation.